We continue our May We Thank You tour today, another conversation, another veteran that we have an opportunity to say thank you to. And I want to say thank you to Boss Services as well for uh, leading the charge on our May We Thank You tour for this year, raising the standard. And you can get more information about that by going to thebossservices.com. Now, with this, we are actually uh, very lucky to be joined by another one of our sponsors, actually, uh, one of our veterans here in the community, Dana from Shadow Trailer World Feed and Supply. Dana, how are you doing? Pretty good. How are you Doing awesome, doing awesome. I really do appreciate you joining us here today for uh, this conversation. And it's one that I feel like we try to do as much as we can throughout the year to say thank you, to show our appreciation. But, you know, it's not uh, it's not enough, in my opinion, for a lot of these things. So before we jump into a lot of the uh, service that you have provided uh, during your career, I'd like to know, uh, first of all, where'd you serve? What, uh, what branch of the military? Uh, I was in the Army, uh, Special Forces. Um, with the fifth group out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky, um, served from, uh, 82 to 94. So you have uh, a few years in there, um, under your belt. Did you, what was your role when you served? Well, um, I was, a, I mean, I was a soldier. I, I, I did a lot of things, uh, uh, army special forces a little bit different than, than the, the regular army, I guess, uh, in, we did real world, world missions. I served in uh, a few different, uh, conflicts. Uh, of course it was in desert storm. That was my last, um, combat duty. Um, so with, you know, your service, you mentioned that, you know, Canada did everything, a lot of different things when you were first thinking or considering, joining up with the army and, and saying, you know what, this is what I want to do. What kind of, what propelled you to do that? Was it something that's family history? Uh, no, not really. Um, I didn't uh, have a big, you know, history of, you know, family being in the military. Uh, there were family that were in the military, but my, uh, I don't know, from the time I was a kid, uh, the only thing I ever wanted to do was be a soldier. Um, serve the country and, and fight for what I thought was right. Well, that is uh, a lot of weight to uh, obviously put on a shoulder at a, at a young age, but you seem like you had that, you know, mindset going in. Now, looking back on your time served, you know, did you, did you serve as long as you wanted to? Would, do you think it was the perfect amount of time or do you think, Hey, you know, I probably could have, you know, left a little bit early. Well, I, I was medically retired after 13 and a half years. Um, I had uh, one too many parachute jumps, I guess, it's, as you would say. Uh, the last one was not uh, was not a good one. So um, couldn't run across the battlefield anymore, couldn't run at all. Um, and so uh, it ended my career. So did you and this is going to be a completely naive question on my part, you know, no matter how many of these interviews and these discussions that I have, I'm always learning new things. You know, you mentioned that, you know, that was the kind of thing, not being able to run across the battlefield and, and that stuff. Was there ever an opportunity for you to transition into a different role that maybe wasn't, we'll say uh, in combat or, or um, in that atmosphere, but maybe something else. Without getting into too much, uh, <laughs> On the other side, once you're high speed, low drag, you, you really can't go back, um, according to the military. So um, I had special training that that just didn't uh, fit with uh, sitting behind a desk, I guess. Sure. There you go. More more of an active uh, role, we'll say. Yeah. I, I so, couldn't do what I was trained to do anymore. So that's, you know. Sure. Totally understand. Totally understand. Well, let's talk, you know, you mentioned desert storm, you mentioned, um, you know, a couple of the other things that you do. What are some moments that you're able to share that you feel like stand out most about your service? Well, 
what stands out most to me is the camaraderie. Um, and I miss that. Um, people just don't understand the closeness, the brotherhood, uh, the family feeling that you get in the military. Um, those are your brothers and sisters that are out there fighting with you. And, and they're there for the same reason you are. Uh, and it, it, it's a, it's a closeness that you just don't feel, uh, in the civilian world. Yeah. It's, it's a lot more different. Um, obviously even conversation wise, there's things that the people that you served with, only they are the ones that can understand, like having right. a conversation with me. It's not, it's not quite the same thing. And, and, right. um, with that, you know, have you, have you been a part of any, uh, other groups outside, you know, since your service, American Legion, um, looking at VFWs, anything like that? Um, I was a member of the Elks Lodge uh, in St. Joe there. Uh, I was a member of the American Legion in, in Kansas, where I used to live, um, and, but not not as much here. Um, I, I kind of, you kind of get to the point where you regress a little bit um, uh, into, your, into your own life and some things, you know, I've got five children. So sometimes the other things take the back seat. You know, Definitely. So. Did, now you mentioned kids yourself too. And, and obviously, you know, there tends to be sometimes some, uh, we'll say repeating of, uh, of lifestyle, we'll say when it comes from, you know, down the line of the family, have any of your kids joined up with the military? Did they bring it up to you? What uh, was that conversation like? Uh, there was times that they brought it up, um, but uh, none of them decided. I had five boys, so uh, none of them decided that uh, that was the thing that they wanted to do. So, and sure. and quite honestly, I sometimes I feel like I sacrificed enough that they didn't need to. So. That's a really different perspective that I don't think that I've heard um, for the, the years that I've been a part of this is, you know, the serving a lot to try to make sure that your kids don't have to. And not necessarily in, in that context that maybe they won't or um, that maybe they, they don't want to or anything like that. But the fact that that might be a goal for anybody who's serving in the military to try to remove as many of those conflicts and, and get it done so that way we don't have to have you know, is built up of a military to try to, you know, uh, you know to do ultimately, that. ultimately we fought for freedom and we fought for the right to choose to do certain things that were given to us, rights were given to us. And, and quite honestly, um, with today's political atmosphere, uh, I, I don't believe that I want my children serving. Totally, totally, totally understand that. Let's talk a little bit more on the, you know, we mentioned um, not necessarily a, a political atmosphere, but let's talk a little bit more about patriotism. And, you know, the big thing with this tour is we want to say thank you. We want to give a voice to our military personnel, our veterans who did serve to maybe share a little bit more. So where civilians get a little bit better understanding of, of, you know, what, not necessarily what you went through in all aspects of it, but a little bit more insight into you know, what it takes to be in the military and, and how we can honor you. So I want to know from you, what do you feel like as a civilian is the most patriotic thing that somebody can do? Is it saying thank you to a veteran? Is it going out and voting on election day? Is it having an American flag uh, on their house? What do you think that would be? Well, I fly American flag on my house every day. Um, and I believe in what it stands for. Um, there's, <clears throat> I guess there's a fine line because what that flag stands for is freedom. It stands for the, the people that died for your rights as a civilian to be able to uh, have all the rights and, and, and freedoms that you have. Um, you drive down the street. Uh, people don't realize I've been in some countries that um, you don't have the right to drive a car. You don't, you don't have the right, unless you have special permission, you don't have the right to say what you want to say, to do what you want to do, to protect your family. Um, you do what they tell you to do. And if you don't like that, then tough. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things in this, this world that, that we just don't understand. 
um, without going through that and without seeing it firsthand, you just don't understand it. Um, but there's a lot of stuff going on in this world that if some of these people that want that, that cry and moan and bitch about their lives, um, you want to talk about starving. Um, there's people in this world that are actually starving. Um, there's actually people that, that don't know where their next meal is going to come from. They don't have a thousand dollar phone sitting in, in their hand and two hundred dollar shoes and, um, and or any way or possible ever in their lifetime to achieve those. Um, they don't have the ability to, to choose um, or to, 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 you know, here we can, if we work really hard and we do what we're supposed to do and, and, and you, you really, you know, want to do something, you can actually do it. But in those countries, you can't. And there's no way for them to do it. So uh, people just don't know that the, the freedoms that they actually have anymore. So do you feel like, and I cannot echo enough what you said there, you're absolutely right. And and though I, again, I have not served in the military, I've had the opportunity to travel to some countries where there are people literally standing in the median of the road waiting to be picked up by a truck to go get a job, to go do a job, just to be able to try to make money to get food for that day. And seeing that worldly you know, view compared to what we have here it's it's night and day difference, and we ab- we absolutely have it on our worst days. We have it far better than so many other people. So, with that, do you feel like? Do you feel? I don't even know how to phrase this question, but from when people come up and, and they talk to you, do they feel like when they ask you about your service? Do you feel like that's something that you are, you know? very excited and and happy to be able to share do you feel like that's something that people are are kind of intruding a little bit in a way uh it it all depends on who it is and how close i am to them um i i i don't talk a lot about what what i did and a lot of it um you don't want to know um but uh you know you put all you put (laughs) you put purple hearts and, and bronze stars on, on your soldiers. Well, that's not what they want. They don't, they're, they don't do it for that reason. They do it for, you know, in, at least in my case, I can't talk for all soldiers, but in my case, I did it because I believed that was what was right. I believe that that's, you know, what I was built to do. That's what I was made to do. And, and I'm very, very proud of what I did um and i wouldn't give up those memories for anything um in in those those things that i did um i always tried to do what was right um morally and and ethically and it's it's just where i was at it uh I guess. I guess I don't. I don't know if I answered your question or not. I just <laughs> no. You got it. You 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 hit the hit what we need, and we'll say with uh, with that question. So, yeah. the the last thing that I want to ask you. Obviously, you have many years of service, and you just said it there a little bit too. There's things that uh, that you know maybe we don't want to know. I want to know: Is there a story that you can tell that you do feel comfortable with us sharing, and whether it's something funny at boot camp, something that you know you did that really brought you and your team closer together? Um, is there anything that you feel comfortable with sharing there? Um, I will tell you: We were we were in in Panama one time, and uh, during the late '80s, and. Uh, you're going through the jungle and you, you, you just, all of a sudden you come up, you come up a hill and, and we were, we were, we came up and we, all of a sudden there's this big clearing and you got cardboard shacks, uh, people living in these things out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and the kids, you know, it, it's funny. We have freedoms. We have all this stuff. These children and, and people were happy to see us. They were happy, but yet they were so poor. They didn't have, barely had clothes. I mean, they may have had one or two pair of pants and one or two shirts. Um, and 
everything that we gave them, you know, we gave them some MREs and, and different things like that. And everything we gave them, it was like the, it was like you take 10 Christmases and you put them all together for a kid. And, it, but it was a little tiny thing like dehydrated peaches, you know, and these kids thought that was just the most wonderful thing in the world. And those kind of moments made me feel good about what I was doing. Um, in those moments, um, you know, you, you, I think back on it and I get emotional um, because it, it was it was heart wrenching to see these people live that way. But yet, we ended up. They had a little soccer ball. And we ended up kicking the soccer ball around. It was it was kind of cool. But those kind of moments, I guess, are um, that stick in my mind. It's a pretty great story. It's the stuff that you uh, that you nowadays you would see on TV. Like soldiers are playing, you know, soccer with uh, some civilians, and yeah. so I'm 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 glad that you shared that story with us, Dana. And uh, you know, again, may we thank you too. Or is all about saying thank you. And I want to take this opportunity to thank you as well, not only for your service and and everything that you just described, but uh, to take the opportunity to talk with us about it. It's not something that everybody is, is willing to do and uh, or interested in doing. And um, I'm just, I'm grateful for you to give me the opportunity to, to talk with you about it. So thank you very much. Yeah, you're there you go. So may we thank you tour. And again, a huge thank you to all of our sponsors, including Boss Services, as well as, again, Shadow Trailer World Feed and Supply.